Ahead on early birds, the scoreboard says it all. Week one, the Falcons against the visitors. What better way to start the season than rivalry week? And who better to sit down with than the unicorn himself? Plus, could the mailman deliver a Heisman Trophy to Athens? That and so much more ahead on early birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ. I'm Justin. I can hardly contain myself. Let's go, man. man. It's go time. The season is here. Falcons yeah. debut tomorrow against the Saints. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good way to start. Go. We'll start things off with the opening drive. Falcons and Saints tomorrow here on Fox 5 and the return of an old friend. Jameis Winston, but shot this might not be the handout interceptions like candy Jameis we know so well. Yeah, I think his time behind Drew Brees has really helped him. He's become a better passer, a guy who doesn't take as many risks as he did in the past. Last year in 2021, before he got hurt, 67% of his passes were 10 yards or less. So he does a good job of just trying to complete the ball, not complete it to the other team. So don't expect <laughs> Justin to I mean Jameis to throw it to other uh, teams this year because He's learned a lot from being with Drew Brees. Yeah, 14 touchdowns, only three picks last year before he got hurt. Here's AJ Terrell. Still just watch the film, but just trying to get any any little details, any little you know hints and stuff that we just pick up on, and uh, just being able to apply it on game day. They just got a lot of weapons. Um, you got to respect everybody, but at the same time, just go out there and compete. And as we continue on the opening drive, we should finally get a look at most, if not all, of this Falcons offense for really the first time uh, on the field at the same time. So for a handful of snapshots in the preseason, mm -hmm. but what should we be looking for? I think you're going to see a totally different offense than you've seen in the last 14 years because no Matt Ryan, now you have a different style of quarterback. Now you get an opportunity to see a lot of different weapons. Sometimes you may see Kyle Pitts back in the backfield. You may see CP in the backfield with Damian Williams. There are going to be a lot of wrinkles, I think, inside of this offense that the fans will be excited to watch. And I'm glad we get a chance to see a lot of them now. Not preseason. Now you get a chance to see them mm -hmm. fully inside a ball game. And one of those playmakers is in Lincoln making his Atlanta debut, receiver Brian Edwards. You know, I feel like we can be explosive. We have a lot of different weapons, a lot of people, a lot of different people that can do different things. So I feel like we can each carve out our own role and just help this team win. And as we wrap up the opening drive, DJ, starting strong. It's always important, but yeah. especially so this year, considering the Falcons' first seven games, that they're brutal. Makes it all the more part important to try and start 1-0. Yeah, Judge, you make a good point. This is going to be a brutal schedule, like you mentioned. And you want to start fast. You want to be able to get out and get a win, especially at home. you mm -hmm. got a division rival. Let's start fast simply because it gives your team a lot of confidence, give your fans a lot of confidence to be able to come back out and watch you. So let's start this thing the right way and get a Dub at home in game number one. Especially against those Saints. Well, welcome into Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. Falcons and Saints tomorrow right here on Fox 5. And Atlanta also trying to avoid how they started last year. All that promise, all that it's excitement. An ugly 32-6 loss at home to the Eagles. Don't yeah, want that, again. that wasn't good. That was a, a big opening statement for Jalen Hurst. He came out and right. played well, ran around, threw the ball well. So we don't want that same thing to happen here with the Aints coming to town. Yeah, especially considering who you're playing. All right, Shaq, oh, yeah. against the Falcons, the Fans are hoping the Saints come up trombone shorty. Come up short. Trombone, oh, yeah. I like trombone shorty. These yeah. music references are a lot harder than I thought they would be. All right. Go warm up the Telestrator. I'll consider my scripting. I'll see you in a few. But right. first, if you look down a wide open fairway anywhere in Georgia, you might just see a unicorn coming towards you. Falcons tight end who can do everything is adding a new sport to his arsenal golf and for tight end Kyle Pitts that's been the best place to get to know his new quarterback Marcus Mariota I spoke to Kyle Pitts one on one and got the 19th hole details on their golf games you're standing in a tee box with him par four who's got the longest drive I uh, <laughs> competitively I'm gonna say me <laughs> but no nah, he's been playing longer than me so Marcus he definitely hits the ball up farther okay Marcus off the tee uh, let's say you guys are both in the middle of the fairway 150 yards out Who's closest to the pin? I'm a sticky. Okay. But he's really good. So I'm not going to try and discredit him. He's, he's like really good. I'm mentally, I'm going to beat him. So I'm going to talk trash. All right. So the, the mental game, that's up, that's up around the green. 10 foot putt. You guys can both make it. Who makes it more often? Probably him. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Takes a big man to admit that. Yeah. 
Yeah, the truth will set you free. And I'm, uh, I, I definitely don't hit those 10 putts sometimes. I too put that. You spend a lot of time with Marcus, with a new quarterback, obviously out here on the practice field, in the facility. What kind of things can you learn about him out on the golf course in three or four hours that you can't learn on a football field? Like life skills, uh, in your relationship, in your faith, uh, uh, financially wise. And I can go on and on. Because uh, our first conversation, you know, we just was out playing and we just, you know, casually just trying to get to know each other. And then he just was telling me, his routine, different things like that. So just different things like I can nitpick and, you know, maybe take from whatever was in that conversation into, you know, my regular life. What feels different going into year two for you? I would say a lot feels different because my, my confidence for one, uh, knowing that I know where to line up now is how can I beat you? How how fast can I beat you? And you know how can I mentally beat you? We're sitting in these uh, really cool refurbished suites here at the Benz. Got the Saints coming into town. I know you, you grew up in Philly, so you knew the Eagles rivals. You went to Florida, so you know some great college rivalries. How do you describe the Falcons Saints rivalry? I feel like I didn't really understand it until like last year or this offseason when I was talking to real Falcon fans. Uh -huh. And they was telling me how bad it is. And I was like, oh, okay, now nah, it's, it's kind of like Florida, Florida State mm -hmm. or Florida, Georgia. It's a big game, it's scrappy, competitive. I think it's going to be packed. It's going to you know, make the game more in, in, intense. There's all the projections and the records you set last year and the NFL Top 100, things like that. Do you feel like you can be one of the best tight ends in this game? Yes, sir. Any DB, I'm going to put my best foot forward. Any linebacker, anybody, any DN linebacker, try and show people I'm number one. Winning is the most important thing. Super Bowls are the most important thing. I get it. Is it important to you to be known as the best or one of the best at your position? Yes. Why is that? I mean, selfishly speaking, I want to be the best at tight end, but also I want to help do my part in this team and, you know, help this team win games and we all we all go to the Super Bowl. Last thing I want to ask about, I saw the post on Instagram, I was seeing it everywhere at the photo shoot, the roses, things like that. <laughs> is, there, is there a story behind that? It's, it was, I was trying to do the uh, Allen Iverson, the Sports Thanks. Illustrated. Nice. How do you think it turned out? I, th I think I look pretty good. <laughs> I just playing. I was doing it for one of my uh, photographer friends. Okay, he, cool. he came up with the idea, so I was like, sure. It was, I was pretty optimistic about it at first. I didn't want to do it, but I was like, all right. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. When we look at this Falcons offense, everybody's wondering, will they be ready for Sunday? Will they be ready for the Saints? Is the timing there? Well, let's go back to preseason game number two that shows you the timing is there for the Falcons. This is the touchdown here to Alameda Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus out here, he's going to run a skinny post over the top. But the timing of this route and Marcus Mariota, what he does with his head, this is the guy he has to control. Now, other guys have to do their job as well. This inside receiver has to get an inside release, and he has to go across his face here. Now, that will take this defender out. Now, you got the back coming out running a little out route. That takes away this flight defender. So now, all you have back here is this safety you have to worry about. Now, when the play gets started, I want you to watch his eyes. Look at Mariota's head. His head is here, but he's holding that safety right in the middle of the field. Now, this guy did a good job of cutting across his face. Now, that guy's out of here. By him going vertical, it keeps this guy in the middle of the field. OZ does a good job of what we call stacking him. When I say stacking, he takes the outside release, but he gets back on top. Now he can win across his face. And now the ball has to be on time. That's the most important part of here is the ball being on time. Watch on this ball. That ball is out of his hand. And look where OZ is. OZ hasn't even hardly came out of the break yet. And this ball comes right over here. This is a nice job of timing and precision. And it does a good job of coming out of it and ends up in a touchdown play. These are the type of plays that this offense will create. And Marcus Mariota and Jose and his other receivers, I think they're on time, Justin. Oh, thanks, Shock. That's what they want to see more of tomorrow against the Saints. We've got more coming on early birds. Is it possible Stetson Bennett makes his way into the Heisman conversation? Michael Jenkins weighs in. Plus. I just continue to tell myself to breathe, breathe, so I can see the ball better. The segment is called Going Deep, and he is a going deep specialist. We go deep with Olamide Zacchaeus next on Early Birds. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. 
And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. Welcome back into Early Birds, and we welcome former Falcons receiver Michael Jenkins talking a little college ball. Uh, Georgia, they got Samford today. With all due respect <laughs> to Samford, we're going to yeah. kind of find a different topic. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the quarterback, right? Stetson Bennett, people are using the H word with him. Heisman, should the mailman be in the Heisman conversation? Why not? I mean, this guy just came off a of natty. He went 80% yeah. <laughs> completion percentage, 370 yards, a couple touchdowns. I mean, he's playing like a Heisman after this first game. So. He keeps it up, definitely in the race. It was an incredible win against Oregon, 368 yards passing, two touchdowns. He ran for another one. And, Jake, I'm even seeing NFL folks, the, the draft experts, say, could he be an NFL prospect? Is that too much or is it possible? No, definitely possible. Okay. I mean, this, this guy can play. And so he, he's proven it, and he'll continue to prove it all year long. The mailman, what an incredible story from walk-on to this. A.D. Mitchell, one of his top targets, had this to say. This is his third year with Coach Monkey. Yeah, so he was, I mean, he looked extremely comfortable. He looked like he was in full control, and it felt like he was. So, you know, it was, it was, it was something. It's his third year. It feels like it's his tenth year at this point. But <laughs> Stetson, like ben, <laughs> Stetson Bennett and Georgia hosting some other Bulldogs, Stanford, at 4 p.m. But speaking of hosting, I love this game today. North Carolina coming to Georgia State. And, Michael, what a great opportunity for the Panthers hosting an ACC team. Yeah, hosting an ACC, played SEC last week. Yep. And, you know, they played North Carolina last week. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't pretty. Right. So, that, of course, they see what App State did, putting up 40 points in the fourth quarter on North yeah. Carolina. So, they're thinking they can do the same, only a you know, seven-point dog. So, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and Georgia State, like you mentioned, they even they played South Carolina last week. They hung with the, the SEC school before ultimately losing. Of course, a few years ago, they beat Tennessee. They did. So they have to feel pretty confident. And how big would that be for this program that they're building there to put this on their resume? Oh, this would be huge. I mean, a, a program that's only, what, 12, 13 years in, right. for them to be playing the competition they're playing and having a, a team like this, Power 5, come to their place, I get a win at home, it would be huge. Looks good against South Carolina. Sean Elliott disappointed with that loss, but thinks it'll help the Panthers today. I want you to know, we, we have a talented football team. We have a, a hard-working football team. We have a gutsy football team, and I think we're going to grow. I think learning from the struggles that we had tonight in the areas that we did will only make us better and prepare us for next week. And finally, it sounds like those uh, those folks in Baton Rouge, the welcome <laughs> mat is uh, wearing a little thin with new coach Brian Kelly. There was yeah. that, that viral video this week. He kind of chided a reporter for being late to a press conference, yeah, and the right. reporter said, maybe if you won, yeah. I'd be on time. They, they snapped back at him. That was crazy. That's a bold <laughs> move, but, man, it's it's getting a little the, – the seat's not quite warm yet. Oh, uh, Not yet, but the honeymoon is over. It's I mean, over. He's, he's done all the, the speeches and, you know, the, the accent <laughs> right. that he, he came up with. So he's, he's in SEC country. He's not a Cincinnati is not Notre Dame, and it's, it's time they brought him down there to win football games. Yeah, what does he need to do? I mean, he needs to win, but is it a style? Is it just that personality? Well, it's just him. I think yeah. he's trying to, you know, win everybody else over with this kind of different personality, but just be him and do what he's always done to win football games. LSU will try to right the ship. I know you're Ohio State, you're predicting another big win today <laughs> over. Who Arkansas we got today? State. Arkansas so, State. Uh, tough one today. Yeah, All right, okay. Shock, we'll see if Ohio State can handle things and your dogs can do the same. Should be a fun one. DJ will send it over to you. All right, J and J. You guys like that? <laughs> Jink and just No, maybe. Okay, maybe. Maybe, maybe it'll stick. We'll see. All right, the Falcons are hoping for some big plays down the field to help beat the Saints tomorrow. And one of their best downfield threats is Alama de Zacchaeus. He says the key to catching deep passes is taking deep breaths. He shows us how it's done in this week's Going Deep. Uh, breathe. Just breathe. Like, sometimes when you hold your breath, your head starts bobbling. It's hard to see the ball. So, like, one thing I just, you know, just continue to tell myself is just breathe, breathe, so I can see the ball better. You know, if you can see the ball, like, it's just about catching the ball after that. Do you try to look around late for it? I mean, are there, li you know, are there little ways that you can keep the defender from, you know, jumping on it? Definitely. Uh, it just depends on how the ball is thrown, where the defender's at, little things like that. But, um, a little, little nuances here and there. Nothing too crazy, but uh, just depend, depending on ball when the defender's at. Well, we've got more to come on Early Birds, including asking Falcons fans to do the unthinkable. Say something nice about the Saints. I hope you're sitting down for this one. 
You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, the training room is a sacred space for NFL players pre-game, during the game, and post-game. In Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the Falcons have some of the best equipment and treatment areas that players may need. Dr. Kyle Hammond walks you through what the room looks like inside the locker room in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. In the training room here, we have um, you know a line of training room tables that are for players, both pre-game, during the game, and post-game to receive various types of treatments. And so a lot of things are utilized uh, besides just kind of topical massage, ointments, and um, taping, and padding, and things like that. But we also have machines like this, which is a game ready, which would be hooked up to a um, compression type wearable item that you would wear on a various joint. Um, and that's usually a recovery method. It's kind of icing and compression at the same time. So if a guy got their knee or their ankle injured or something like that, they may go into that post game to start the recovery process or just for general inflammation. Um, we have ultrasound machines as well. Uh, we have um, red laser machines, things that are used for not only treatments for various issues or inflammation issues on soft tissues, but also for warm up methods to help warm up soft tissues sometimes, uh, create, you know, um, blood flow, uh, generate warmth, generate an anti-inflammatory effect to help with the warm up process, but can also be used in the recovery process as well. More to come on early birds. Falcon fans, be the bigger person. It's time to be nice to the Saints. We'll try our best next on early birds. Early birds has been presented to you by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Falcons fans, Saints fans, can't we all just get along? Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> nah, can't it's do never going to happen. Nah. All right, we sent Miles Garrett out with the toughest job in the 404. Okay. Get some Falcons fans to say something nice about the Saints. Ooh, good Here's luck, Miles. Miles. Good luck. Who is your favorite team in the NFL? Got to be the Falcons. What do you like about the Falcons? Well, I've been a, I was a hometown fan. Uh, the color scheme always got to me. And, you know, it's just it's something about rooting for the home team, man. I just love it. Jake, how big of a Falcons fan are you? My favorite team in the entire universe. Favorite player? Kyle Pitts. Are you guys big Falcons fans? Huge Falcons fans. What is one nice thing you can say about the New Orleans Saints? Falcons open up against the Saints this weekend. Pretty friendly rivalry, would you say so? No, no, I hate them. Hate, them, hate their guts. What's one nice thing you can say about the Saints? Because I like the bourbon tree. <laughs> What's one nice thing you can say about the New Orleans Saints? Makes sense. Bourbon Street is the best place on earth, but that's about all they got. Nothing else? Nah. Absolutely not. Uh, no, nah. no, nah, I can't actually. And that, that took a lot, just the first one. So yeah, no. Nah. If you guys had to say one nice thing about the Falcons' rival, the Saints, what would you say? Nah, can't say. Uh, no, nah. no. Nah. I'm trying really hard here, and uh, yeah, uniforms are cool, I guess. You know, uh, that black and gold plays really well. Um, yeah, no. Nah. No, that's it. Oh, that's good. Uh, I feel the last guy. Though. I have nothing really good to say or think about the Saints. I mean, right. I think the puppies made some good points about their <laughs> football analysis. We might actually invite them on as a guest host next I week. Like we'll that. see. All right. If you want to go to more Falcons game this season, just scan the QR code you see here for details. The code will also send you to the Falcons season ticket page. Packages are available now for the exciting new season ahead. And that starts off with Falcons and Saints tomorrow. Give me a matchup to watch, Shock. Uh, Alvin Kamara versus our linebackers, Michael Walker, Sean Evans. Right. Those guys keep him under wraps because he's used a big part of their offense. It's a team effort containing the Norcross High School alum. True. He always seems to have a big game in store for his hometown team. All right, thanks for joining us. It'll be a fun game tomorrow for DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. See you here next Saturday. Have a good morning and a great weekend.